Occam's razor, a philosophical razor that touts the simplest explanation usually is the one that's right, but it's actually more fleshed out than that. If you have an event and you have multiple potential explanations for the cause of that event, it is best to choose the least convoluted or complex explanation for the cause of that event. If your explanation for the cause of an event requires more and more complex and working parts to prove, the more you add to the hypothesis lowers the chance of the conclusion being correct. That's because you would require a higher standard of evidence for each part you add and you would have to make sure they all logically follow to the conclusion. Let's make an example conspiracy theory, like, all birds are not real, they're just camera drones for the government to spy on us. In order for this to be true, multiple federal agencies would have to be in on the conspiracy, already involving hundreds of people. Also, all zoologists, biologists, and every person who worked in any peripheral industry would all have to be in on it, and every year we add new college graduates into those industries. Therefore, it's an even rising number. At what part during their employment do they get let in on the conspiracy? If there is an initiation process, has it ever been leaked? Due to the complexity of this theory, the amount of evidence you would need to prove that this is true is enormous, other than the simpler conclusion of, well, birds are real. Little word of warning though, be careful not to use Occam's razor to judge the validity of arguments using simplicity and nothing else. Any conclusion or causes of events must always be supplied with sufficient evidence first. It doesn't mean just because an explanation is simple automatically means it's correct. That's not true. For example, when diagnosing a problem with a car, shooting for just a simple explanation may not be your best bet here. All possible fact-finding and evidence must be gathered first on the cause of the issue. It is then you can use Occam's razor to whittle down possible causes of an issue so long you have sufficient evidence backing them up. And usually, it's the option that's the least convoluted. Occam's razor can also be explained as entities must not be multiplied beyond necessity. Keywords being beyond necessity. You can have complex causes for an issue, but not not unnecessary superfluous causes. Hume's guillotine. This is used to draw the distinction between how the world is versus how the world should be. It's also known as the is-ought problem. It addresses a problem in which people take an observable fact about the world and use that fact to make moral arguments. For example, the field of evolutionary psychology seeks to explain the is of human nature. However, at certain times, some people misuse evolutionary psychology and try to make the argument that, that because human beings are evolutionarily predisposed for something, they're Therefore, that thing must exist in society. This would be the ought part. In fact, this line of reasoning is logically flawed. It's called the naturalistic fallacy. Hume's guillotine seeks to split how the world is from how the world should be. That arguments from fact should be completely different than arguments from morals. Grice's razor, a tool in dialogue that says to address what the speaker is trying to get across instead of the literal words they say. Human communication is not only about the semantic definition of words, but also contains a lot of context and subtext. For example, when I say the word apple, you don't only think about the pure definition of the word apple, but chances are it also invokes a lot of other concepts that are related to the word apple, and those concepts can completely change depending on the context of the conversation. So a good rule of thumb is, focus on the context and the ideas that a person is trying to get across, rather than just the words they use. Einstein's razor. Basically, to make things as simple as possible, but no simpler. Although the direct quote is, the supreme goal of all theory is to make the irreducible basic elements as simple and as few as possible without having to surrender the adequate representation of a single datum of experience. It emphasizes that simplicity should not come at the cost of oversimplifying to the point where essential aspects of a theory are neglected. Wayne's world. Nah, okay, I'm just kidding. Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. Just because something had an undesired outcome does not mean there was a bad intention behind it. For example, in an interpersonal relationship, if you feel someone has wronged you, take a second to think. Did they even mean to cause harm or were they just forgetful and incompetent? This works if you have the same amount of evidence where either case could be plausible. However, if you have more evidence that leads towards malice than neglect, it is then you can assume maliciousness. Even in criminal court, the severity of the punishment or whether something is even considered a crime or not is based on the intent or the mens rea of the person being accused. Sagan's standard, a principle that says, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. This is a heuristic that's commonly used to decipher evidence-based science from pseudoscience. Let's say you created a new type of medicine that cures Alzheimer's. Based on our current research and evidence, we don't have a cure to Alzheimer's yet, so any claim like this must be put through rigorous scientific testing. And since the claim being made goes against all of our current scientific literature, the bar to prove that that medicine works would be pretty high. Now keep in mind that the bar would be high, but not impossible to clear, as long as it's put through adequate scientific testing and any other placebo effects or biases are ruled out. Hitchens razor. 
That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Created and named after Christopher Hitchens, it's very similar to Russell's teapot which states, the onus on proving a claim is the one making it, not the person defending against it. It's commonly used in debates refuting the existence of God. Adler's razor, also known as Newton's flaming laser sword. Why can't they name it that? That's so much cooler. It states, if something cannot be settled by experiment or observation, then it's not worthy of debate. It gets the flaming laser sword name because it proposes to be sharper and much more dangerous than Occam's razor. Now all of the philosophical razors that I mentioned have their own criticisms, but this one probably the most, because arguably, there are things in the world that cannot be experimented on or observed, but are still worthwhile debates and discussions, such as conversations about art, music, literature, entertainment, stories, and moral philosophy, Popper's falsifiability principle. In order for something to be deemed scientific and empirical, it must be falsifiable. This goes for personal beliefs as well. If you have a belief or opinion, no matter how strong it is, in order for that belief to be rational, there must be evidence that you can be shown to shake you out of that belief. If not, then that is not rationality. It's ideological dogma. We must be willing to adopt a Bayesian analysis of the world, and our beliefs should change if given sufficient evidence to do so. A lot of conspiracy theories fall into the trap of being unfalsifiable, a secret shadow government controlling the world? If given evidence that this is true, the response would be, of course this is true, the secret shadow government controls the world. However, if shown evidence against the claim, the response is, well, that shadow government made that mistake on purpose because they wanted to lead you off their trail, therefore making it impossible to disprove the conspiracy theory. You know, all roads lead to Rome. Cognitive dissonance is an uncomfortable thing for people to deal with, and when dealt with a case, people usually have two options, either use the new information to update your prior belief, or warp reality to fit your existing belief. And unfortunately, it's more common that people choose the latter. Remember, these are just rules of thumb and rough tools to make decision making easier. These are not complete laws of logic. And remember that any and all claims and belief must always be backed up by evidence. Be sure to share this video and thanks for watching.